to determine whether the points a minus 6 minus 6 minus 1 b 4 minus 3 0 c minus 4 5 1 and d 5 4 2 lie in the same plane so let's just have a look at this using GeoGebra for one minute so here we have our axis if we click to see the four points here we can see the four points here a B, C, and D. And at first glance, they look like they might actually form a plane. So let's have a look at this algebraically to, to see exactly what happens. Now remember, well, in order to make a plane, all you need is three points. We're going to take the points A, B, and C and form them into a plane, and then check to see whether point D actually lies on the plane. Now you don't have to take ABC, you could take any of the three points. So, there's a di that diagram. So first find the equation of the plane contain, containing just three of the points. We, we're going to take A, B and C. So labelling up my diagram a little bit. This is point A, this is point B, point C, this is point D. Now, in order to um, put A, B, C in a plane, we need to go from O to A. We need to find vector O, A. That's quite straightforward. Then we will need to find vector A, B, and we take some multiple of that. And then we need to find the vector B, C, and we need to take another multiple of that. That is the same as going O to C. Well, C is going to be sort of my general point on my plane, and this will be called the vector R. That's how we actually form a, a vector equation of a, of a plane. So, doing that procedure, so the vector equation will be equal to OC, so OC is R, is equal to OA plus lambda AB plus lambda mu BC. In this particular case, at the moment, mu and lambda will be equal to 1 if we use those vectors. So we have to find the vector a, b, uh, sorry, o, a. So o, a is straightforward. We go from o to a, so it's just going to be the same as the coordinates, minus 6, minus 6, minus 1. a, b, we use the idea that a, b is a, o plus o, b. So we need to take minus this 1. So I've written all red, so they all become positive. So 6, 6, 1 plus the coordinates of b, which are 4, minus 3, 0, in the form of a vector, and that's going to give me 10, 3, and 1. Just adding those together. 10, 3, and 1. The vector bc, the vector bc is the same as going bo plus oc, so it's going to be minus the coordinates of this one, so it's going to be minus 4, plus 3, 0 has no sign, plus the coordinates of C, which are minus 4, 5, and 1. So that's going to give me minus 8, 8, and 1. So I'm now in position to form my vector equation on the plane for A, B, and C. So the vector equation will be, we use R is equal to vector O, A, which is minus 6, minus 6, 1 plus lambda times vector AB, which is 10, 3, 1, plus mu times minus 8, 8, 1. So in the present setting, mu and lambda will be equal to 1. But remember, we move these, and that then generates all the other points in the plane. So that, that we've now found our plane. So what we need to know is, does this point here actually lie in this plane that we've just calculated? So now check that the point D, our third point, lies on this particular plane. R is equal to minus 6, minus 6, 1, plus lambda 10, 3, 1, plus mu minus 8, 8, 1. So what we do, we put 5, 4, 2 in the form of a vector and put it equal to this equation. That's minus 6, minus 6, 1, plus lambda 10, 3, 1, plus mu minus 8, 8, 1. And what we do, we're going to check each component and calculate for two of them, we'll calculate a vanda of uh, 
by use of lambda and mu and check to see whether they work in the third case. However, it's easier, first of all, if you combine this vector with this one. So taking these over here, you're going to get 5 plus 6, which is 11, 4 plus 6, which is 10, to minus 1, which is 1. Is equal to lambda 10, 3, 1, plus mu minus 8, 8, 1. So we're going to have the equation 10 lambda plus minus 8 mu is equal to 11. And we're going to have 3 lambda plus 8 mu is equal to 10. And then we're going to have lambda plus mu is equal to 1. So we're going to do, label each of these up. Now, it's very easy. If we just add 1 and 2, these will just eliminate in this case. So, 1 plus 2, so it's your ability to solve simultaneous equations. We're going to have 13, 10 plus 3, lambda, is equal to 11 plus 10, which is 21, which gives lambda is equal to 21 over 13. We'll then substitute into 1. So, we'll put the value in here. So, we'll get 10 times 21 over 13 minus 8 mu is equal to 11, so that's going to give me 210 over 13 minus 8 mu is equal to 11. I'm going to take the 8 mu over here and 11 over here, so I'm going to do 210 over 13 minus 11, which gives me 67 over 13 is equal to 8 mu, and then we divide by 8, we get that mu is 67 over 104. Right, so what, now we've got a value of lambda and mu. If this point's on the plane, it's also got to work for the last value. So checking in 3, 21 over 13 plus 67 over 104 obviously is not equal to 1. All right, so the conclusion is, because it didn't work out for the last one, then point D does, does not, sorry, lie in the same plane. If it was to lie in the same plane, then this, these two here, would have to be equal to 1 for it to work. But point D is not in the same plane. Now, if we look at it using our G-algebra, so I'll just click here, that gives me all the vectors I just found. And then I click here, this actually gives me the plane. There is its, here is its uh, vector equation. And this here is its equivalent uh, Cartesian equation. Now, for planes, we like to use this symbol. This is a capital pi. And I like to use that symbol for indicating that we have a plane. So if we now rotate this around and have a look at it from this angle, we can very easily see that D is actually not in the plane. We can see that the points A, B, and C are in the plane, but obviously D is not in the plane. Okay, so we just look at different angles if you like, we can very, very easily see that the point D is not in the plane. However, if we look at it like that, it might look like that it is actually in the plane, but it isn't. Okay, so here is uh, the final diagram drawn for you.